All right, for the second video of section seven, uh, 1.7, 1 we're going to talk about division, dividing positive and negative numbers. Now, similar to multiplication, when I have two negative numbers and I divide them, my answer is always going to be positive. Or if I have a positive number and I'd want to divide it by a negative number, or vice versa, my answer is going to be negative. So again, two negatives make a positive, and if I have opposite signs, my answer is going to be negative. Now, off to the side, when I think about division, for example, if I have six divided by two. I want to know how many times does two go into six, and I end up getting three, right? Now, we can always double check division by simply multiplying back three times two, and I should always end up getting the top number, six. So then what if I asked you to divide six divided by zero? Hmm, how many times does zero go into six? Some of you might think, six, right? Well, if I double check by multiplying, what's six times zero? Uh-oh, it's not six, right? So that doesn't work. I should, again, always be able to invert my operation and double check. So what if you thought maybe zero is my answer? Well, what's zero times zero? Uh-oh, not six either, right? And so really, there is no number that I can multiply by zero that's going to end up giving me the number six. So six divided by zero actually is undefined, we say. We cannot divide something by zero. Now, what if I had zero divided by six? What number can I multiply by six to give me zero? Well, that's easy. Zero, right? So zero divided by six is zero. But 6 divided by 0 is undefined. So be careful. When that 0 is under the line, it's undefined. We cannot divide by 0. All right, so let's do a few examples of division. Example number 5 asks us to divide, and if possible, check our answers. So I have 14, positive 14, divided by negative 7. I have a positive divided by a negative. My signs are opposite, so I know my answer is going to be negative. And what's 7 divided by, or excuse me, 14 divided by 7? How many times does 7 go into 14? You should end up getting negative 2. Again, we can always double check by taking these two values, multiplying them, and getting back uh, the number that we started with, 14. Negative 7 times negative 2. Two negatives make me a positive, and I end up getting 14, which works and makes sense. All right, what about B? If I have negative 32 divided by negative 4, two negatives, remember, make a positive, and how many times does 4 go into 32? Well, I end up getting positive 8. All right, what about C? If we have a negative 10 divided by positive 2, negative divided by a positive is a negative, and I end up getting negative 5. Again, I can always double check. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10, so I know I got the right answer. All right, what about D? Negative 17 divided by 0. Now, I'll be careful. Remember, we can't ever divide by 0, so that answer is undefined because 0 times nothing gives me negative 17, right? So that problem is undefined. We can't do it. All right, the next little idea I want to talk about is what happens with the negative is in the numerator versus in the denominator. Well, if you look at this first one, I have a negative 10 divided by positive 2. Isn't that negative 5? But in the second one, I have a positive 10 divided by a negative 2. Well, isn't that still just negative 5? And in the last one, I have 10 divided by 2, and then the opposite of that. Well, 10 divided by 2 is 5, and the opposite of 5 is negative 5. So all three of these give us the same answer. So what I'm, uh, the purpose of this is to show you that the negative can be at the top, numerator, it could be at the bottom, or it could be kind of out in front of the fraction, and they all give us still the same negative value. So you can put the negative at the top or the bottom. You just can't put it on both the top and the bottom because that would make it a positive, right? Two negatives make a positive. But that might be helpful uh, when we're doing other types of problems uh, with positive or negative uh, numbers in the top or the bottom, numerator and denominator. So let's practice rewriting them first, and then we'll actually use it to do some problems. So if you look at example number six, it asks us to rewrite each of the following in two equivalent forms. So on the first one, they give us 5 divided by negative 2. They don't want us to actually divide, but they do want us to rewrite it in a different way that's equivalent to the first way. So instead of writing the negative at the denominator, I could simply write the negative in the numerator. 
I still have a negative 5 over 2. Or I could put the negative in front of the fraction and say that I have a negative 5 over 2. Both give us the same, all three give us the same value. Or on B, if I have a negative in front and I have a 3 tenths, negative 3 tenths, I can write that as a negative 3 over 10, or I can write that as a 3 over negative 10, and it would still be the same value. All right, make sure that you practice some of that stuff, and then we'll do our last video here in a second, covering the rest of the examples for section 1.7.